Council meeting of January 7, 2020 is called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first matter of business this evening is to swear in our newly elected council members. City Clerk Donna Nault will be swearing in myself, James Bode, and Kathy McDowell. So if the three of you will come up here, please. to call the roll, please. Yes. Council Member Nesco. Here. Council Member Bode. Here. Council Member Peterson. Here. Council Member McDowell. Present. Council Member Schmidt. Here. For the record, Council Member Dorsey is absent. However, he will be appearing by speakerphone pursuant to City Council Protocol Manual Section 7.08. So I'm going to call him right now. Hi, Kevin. This is City Clerk Donna Nault. Are you ready for a meeting? Okay, I'm going to put you on speakerphone. No, no, you don't. Okay, hold on. Okay. Hey, Don, hang it up. They said to keep it off. Okay. Listen to the IT folks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you with us, Council Member Dorsey? I'm here. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much, Donna. Um, can you that, hear me okay? Yes, yes, we can. And with that, we will move on um, to some news to share with the community this evening. I have a letter here from Bob Donna? Rogers, former mayor, addressed to myself, the council members, and to city manager Jeff Knighton. His letter reads, as you know, our son was recently involved in an accident while assisting other drivers near Hoquiam. In order to fully support my family during his recovery, I am resigning my seat on the Shelton City Council as of January 7th, 2020. Donna, I'm not hearing you. I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who has been so supportive during my time on the council. Not right. I would especially like hey, to Kevin, we're, we're here. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you just fine. Who 
help me in my new role. I will miss working with him as well as my fellow council members. They have been a great team through a challenging Jeff, I'm not hearing you. I deeply appreciate their dedication to our city and its residents. I look forward to that continuing with new council member. Uh, Deidre at the moment is reading uh, Bob's resignation letter. Many thanks to city manager Jeff Knight and city staff. You have had many challenges over the past few years, but continue to work hard to keep our city moving forward. Yeah. Uh, I always appreciate your answering oh, my queries, you your yeah, openness. Deidre is and uh, reading Bob's resignation hand. letter, so we'll, uh, we'll get Finally, back I would there like in oh. a second. Finally, I would like to thank the Okay, okay, I'll hang on. Trust yeah. and support. Right. I have gained many new acquaintances and friends <coughs> over the past two years, something I am so grateful to have had that opportunity to do. We have a wonderful city, which I have had the privilege to call my home. Sincerely, Robert G. Bob Rogers, Shelton City Council, position number seven. So with that, City Manager Knight, and I'll turn it over to you for late changes to the agenda. I have uh, two late changes for the agenda this evening, uh, uh, Councilmember Peterson. The first, um, I would like to ask if there's council consensus for city staff to begin the application process to uh, fill the recently vacated position? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and the second, uh, I would uh, like to request at the end of this meeting an executive session to review uh, the performance of a public employee and uh, for potential um, to discuss with legal counsel potential litigation. 15 minutes with no action to follow. Yeah, and 15, uh, be about 15 minutes uh, with no action to follow that session. And we'll add that sure. at the end of the agenda between uh, items J and K, is that correct? Between. After eight. Uh, between H and I. All right. Is there consensus to do so? Yes. 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 Thank you. With that, then we will move on to any changes the council may have for the agenda this evening. And seeing none, I will turn it over to City Clerk Donna Nault for our election of mayor and deputy mayor. Just a quick intro. Is this on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, under state law, you're required at the first meeting um, of the year following an election to select a mayor um, from among your numbers. Um, any council member, according to your protocol manual, can nominate any other council member, including yourself. There is no second required for any nomination. Um, and with that, the city clerk will now open the floor for nominations. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, I wish to nominate Kevin Dorsey for the position of mayor. Thank you. Anyone else have a nomination? Would you raise your hand, please? I wish oh. to uh, nominate Eric for mayor. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have a nomination? Please indicate by raising your hand. None? The floor is now closed to nominations. Council Member Dorsey and Council Member Inesco have received nominations for mayor. I will now ask each council member one at a time to state your vote by voice. When called upon, if you wish to vote for Council Member Dorsey, say Council Member Dorsey. If you wish to vote for Council Member Inesco, say Council Member Inesco. A single candidate must receive at least four votes to be selected as mayor. I'll start with Council Member Schmidt. Dorsey. Thank you. Onesco. Thank you. Council Co Member Peterson. Council Member Dorsey. Council, Council Member, Member Dorsey. Thank you. Council Member Onesco. And Council Member Dorsey. Can you hear? <laughs> uh, Council Member Dorsey, it's, uh, it's your turn to uh, vote for selection of mayor. Uh, who's been nominated? Uh, you have been nominated, and Council Member Anisco has been nominated. All right, I'll, I'll vote for myself. Thank you, sir. So that is a majority. Our new mayor is Council Member Dorsey. Pursuant to the Council Protocol Manual, the new mayor shall now conduct the selection process for deputy mayor. 
Uh, mayor Dorsey, if you would uh, ask for nominations for deputy mayor for the city. All right. At this time, I'd like to ask for a deputy mayor's nominations. If Can I go first? Yes. Sure. Go right ahead. I nominate Deidre Peterson. Thank you. Anyone else have a nomination? Please I nominate Joe Schmidt. And I'll respectfully decline. Okay. okay. Any other nominations? Seeing none. Deputy Mayor Deidre Peterson. Thank you. There you go. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Mm -hmm. All right. With that, we will then move on to our council reports for this evening. And I will start with you, if I may, Council Member Schmidt. Of course, as soon as I have a mouthful of something. M and M. Yes. Uh, on the agenda this week, I have an EDC board meeting on Thursday, and that is it in the short-term forecast. Maybe hang up and. Um, am I next? Yes. So we had our legislative send-off this morning at Alderbrook. It was very well attended. We listened to um, the different entities, city, county, well, well, anyway, city and EDC chamber. And then Tim uh, Sheldon and Dan Griffey and Drew McEwen all spoke, and, and so we, we had a good time. Um, and tomorrow morning I have my left board meeting, and that's my week. Um, tomorrow morning, I have the Opiate Stakeholders Task Force meeting, and my next meeting will be for the Peninsula Regional Transportation Project Organization, pending any committee updates. I'm just finishing my intake. Outside our uh, meetings and briefings, I intended the legislative send-off this morning and the county UGA meeting, expansion meeting, this, also this morning. And I believe last week I had a meeting with Deputy Mayor, and that's about it. Mayor Dorsey, at this time, if you uh, have a council report to give, um, uh, now's the uh, opportunity to do that. And at the conclusion, if you would like to designate uh, Deputy Mayor Peterson to uh, uh, run the remainder of the meeting, and uh, you can disconnect if you'd like. I'm sorry, Jeff, I had a hard time hearing you there. Oh, no. You want me to ask her to continue the meeting? Yeah, uh, you can do that. If you have a council report to give, uh, you can do that first, or you can ask Deputy oh, Mayor see. to continue Council. the meeting. I really don't have much of a council report right now. I've been over here in Hawaii for 10 days or so, and um, but I'm anxious to get back. <laughs> so, sir, if you'd like to ask uh, Deputy Mayor Peterson to continue the meeting, and uh, we will see you when you return home. All right, Deputy Mayor Peterson, would you please continue the meeting? Yes, I will. Thank you, Mary, Mayor Dorsey. Thank you, sir. Uh, have a good afternoon. All right, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. And to the city staff and to the community members working through that with us today, this is the first time we've taken the opportunity of that item in our protocol manual. So <laughs> thank you for the technical assistance and the patience from everyone involved. Um, with that, we will move on to general public comment. Um, the city has a public comment period both during our business and action items as well as twice during general public comment. This is our first of two general public comment periods. Donna, has anyone signed up for general public comment? First on the list is Dale Elmond. And when you get to the podium, if you'd please state your name and if you're a resident of the city. My name is Dale Sterling Elmland. My address is uh, uh, 3183 East Brockdale Road, outside the city limits, but a long time city member. Uh, the comment that I want to make today, bringing up the topic of the uh, structure at, uh, that's uh, listed as uh, 218 South 5th Street. The structure is adjacent to the city hall. The structure was on the, it's actually a structure included on the school, Shelton School District historical 
listings. Uh, it's the oldest structure still standing for the Shelton School District. The history of the school district was the first standing buildings for the school were at Walker Park while the fort was built at the point in, in Arcadia. Then it was over near the single school, uh, single schoolhouse building was over near um, Tozier's and then also at Bayshore at the same time. Then when those closed, the Lincoln School was built and we know that the Lincoln School was here and the Lincoln Gym was here. Uh, the school marm's house, there were two of them. One was moved in 1974, it was picked up and uh, trucked up across from the Jensen Road and set there and is now a structure for residents which is falling apart, unfortunately. The other one still stands where, uh, where you used to stand behind the Lincoln Gym, right there as it is behind the parking lot right now. Uh, the structure is dilapidated, it's falling apart, and nobody has lived in it in at least 30 years, as far as I know. Uh, the uh, structure is unsafe, and I know it is being eyed to be raised. At this point, I wanted to at least uh, show that the general public in the city that this structure does have historical significance to our community. Uh, it is something that we should at least identify in the future if it was raised. We should at least know that it was there. Uh, everything else of our history of our schools other than what is new and the old Evergreen Building, which is a, currently the oldest standing used you uh, occupied school in the state uh, is the oldest building we have and it's gonna go away. So it's the last of the vestiges of the school district here in our community. So as we move forward in having that building removed, I'd like to make sure that we remember what it was and if you have plans on doing something on the property, on the parking lot, with the basketball court, which is applaud for the basketball court. Thank you, Mr. Ullman. That's time. I, I, I move that you at least identify something to do with it, Thank with, you so the, with the uh, property. Thank you. And Donna, do we have anyone else yes. at this time? I have Dean Jewett, but I don't know which agenda item. Right now? It's open. <laughs> well, in that case, Mr. Jewett, by all means, please. Thank you. Uh, Dean Jewett, city residence. Uh, Welcome to the new members. Uh, kind of going to have a, a maybe a politically incorrect statement with a shotgun approach here. Uh, I was over at a meeting with the wife, uh, the friends of Percival Creek. Some of you see on my Facebook page, I do a lot of posting of the Olympia pictures, and we have you know camps, fires, crime, different things like that. Uh, I was invited over to a meeting of theirs, and it was a very informative meeting. Uh, I would ask the city council and Chief Moody, and then maybe even reach out to Casey Salisbury if we could get something like that in Shelton. That was uh, pretty eye-opening and beneficial. Uh, basically, it just explored the rights of private citizens and how those intersected with people that were homeless and whose rights trumped each other's, and even if they did trump, because really it's not a trumping of the rights, it's how they, you know, how they mesh together. One does not overshadow the other. So how do they coexist? So there was some good information in that that I can share, maybe not in the public forum. Uh, but I did want to say if there's something like that that we could call together, I would highly support that in any way, shape that I could. A uh, couple of things I want to address are, uh, you know, I, I have, make a habit of going by the uh, gazebo in the post office park. Uh, and I make a habit of picking up the garbage there and disposing of it properly but it seems like it's an ongoing type of a situation. So who's leaving the garbage? Who's accountable for that garbage? And who pays for that garbage to be picked up? So uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Chief Moody and his code enforcement officer. There was a, a travel trailer that was parked down on Front Street, being as my building faces Front Street. I have first vision of said campers, and I make sure that I'm very boisterous about making sure that people know that they're there as well. Last thing I want to see is Capitol Lake on Front Street. So uh, I know that we all 
you know, have to pay attention to the Boise and the Ninth Circuit. Uh, but that doesn't mean that our hands are tied and that we can't find workarounds to get the results that we need to get. And that doesn't mean just booting people out and kicking them around. You know, are the services available there? I know that we tried to pass uh, a tax here that could have been used very significantly for, for coding some social workers in with the police. I think that's a, a very good idea so that we could take advantage of that. I know we're going to have our behavior health. If it's not already opened up, I think it's pretty close. It may have already. But uh, anyway, I got two good pages of notes, and uh, more will follow. So being as Dale took 20 of my seconds, I'll give them back. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jewett. And Donna, is there anyone else? And the else? last person signed up is Sharon Trask. Oh, I. Get up. No? Okay, that's it. All right. In that case, then, we will move to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as published? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Point of order. Yes. On that, just oh. a comment oh. before we vote. Is that okay? Okay. Um, just noticed on this that it was a, a good move to purchase a police car with the end of at just for the end of the year. So we got a two mm -hmm. new police cars. Two used police cars. Two used. Excuse me. Two previously new enjoyed new by <laughs> other law enforcement agencies. <laughs> sure. So, but that's good. Glad, glad to see that we were able to get that uh, accomplished. Good. Back to you. All right. And on with the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. And his end agenda passes. Um, with that, we will move on to the business agenda. Has anyone signed up for public comment for the business agenda? No one has signed up. Okay. Our first item um, is information about the MTA parking lot. City Manager Knighton, if you would be so kind. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Mayor, members of council, and members of the public. Uh, in 2014, the city collaborated with MTA and the Mason Conservation District to seek funding from Department of Ecology's uh, Stormwater Financial Assistance Program. Uh, grant funding was requested and awarded for the parking lot retrofit project in the 600 block of Railroad Avenue. And uh, total eligible cost was $302,500. Uh, the Department of Ecology's cost was slightly under 260000 and uh, the recipient share was uh, slightly more than 40, 45000 uh, There was an invitation to bid in November. Thirteen bids were received and opened at the December 4th bid opening with R.W. Scott Construction, Inc. having the lowest responsible bid of $308,641.12. Um, there is no financial impact to the city and uh, or any as any funds and or staffing costs not reimbursed by the ecology grant will be billed to and reimbursed by Mason Transit Authority per an interlocal agreement. Uh, we would request that you concur to place this uh, project award form and the construction contract on the January 21st agenda uh, for action. Any comments or questions from the council at this time? Is there consensus to move this, act, this to the action Can agenda? Did yeah. you put his finger up? I'm fine. Okay. Yeah. Yes, concur. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. All right, that is the only item we have this evening on the business agenda, so we'll move on to the action agenda. And has anyone signed up for public comment on the action agenda? No one. Okay. In that case, back to City Manager Knighton. Um, our first item here is the Department of Health Drinking Water System Repairs and Consolidation Grant Acceptance. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor, members of Council, and members of the public. Uh, Evergreen Mobile Estates is a mobile home park outside of the city limits, but within our urban growth area uh, and, it, uh, and within our water service area. Uh, it has been issued a compliance order to install treatment to address failing on-site wastewater systems in close proximity to its drinking water well. Um, as an alternative to installing treatment, uh, the estates are considering connection to the city of Shelton's water system and abandoning their compromised well. This grant will allow the city to have a con consolidation feasibility study conducted to assess the existing infrastructure and, uh, um, and propose potential rate structure to finance those improvements. The, in late September, uh, we were notified of, of a successful grant application uh, in, the, the, in a maximum amount of $30,000. Uh, the next step following grant acceptance is to procure, procure the services 
of a qualified consultant to complete the feasibility study. And uh, nothing has changed since the uh, last time you heard this item uh, on the business agenda, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do we have a motion on this item? I move to accept the Department of Health grant by authorizing the Public Works Director uh, strike that. I move to accept the Department of Health grant by authorizing the City Manager to sign the Drinking Water System Repairs and Consolidation Agreement. Is there a second? Second. Has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion, questions, or comments? Just a comment. I think this is a good step. Um, we had some discussion in our weekly briefing just about what this really means um, in terms of working with an, uh, a well system connecting to city water. Um, I think it's good that we have the, the capital from the state to be able to kind of look at what this is gonna look like and maybe potentially hopefully learn and document any lessons um, as we move down the road with connecting to existing residential. Um, but again, there are a couple questions that I did raise to Jeff um, during the briefing just to share with the rest of you just related to um, how how things get sort of metered and what the overall scope um, in the future be in terms of sewer connections and other things too. So, um, but this is limited to the scope of water. So uh, it'll be good to see what comes of that. So. Any other comments or questions from council at this time? All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the Department of Health grant by authorizing the city manager to sign the Drinking Water Systems Repairs and Consolidation Agreement. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. Our second item this evening is from Community Development Director Mark Ziegler, and he has some information on us about the Shelton Arts Commission. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, Council Members. Um, pleased to bring to you tonight uh, the appointment of three valuable volunteers that serve on our Shelton Arts Commission. Uh, their terms ended at, on December 31st, 2019, and all three have recommended or at least applied for reappointment. Those include Eleanor Lindquist, Amy Cooper, and Coco Chang. Uh, Amy and Eleanor have served full terms in the past and wish to do so again. Uh, Ms. Chang was appointed back in early 2019 to fill a unexpired term through uh, the end of last year. And so staff at this point recommend the appointment of all three to continue serving on the Shelton Arts Commission, um, conducting projects such as the rotating art gallery here in the Civic Center, the Empty Bowls uh, project, as well as the traffic signal box art project in our community. Wonderful. Do we have a motion on this item? I move to approve the appointment of Eleanor Lindquist, Amy Cooper, and Coco Chang to the Shelton Arts Commission. Is there a second? I second that. There's a motion and a second. Any questions or comments from council? All right, we have a motion and a second to approve Eleanor and Lindquist, Amy Cooper, and Coco Chang to the Shelton Arts Commission. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And with that, the last item on the action agenda is council committee assignments, and city manager Jeff Knighton has those details. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Mayor, members of council, and members of the public. We do have uh, committee assignments um, that uh, through discussions with, uh, with various council members, um, everybody, uh, all the council members at the moment will keep their same assignments. There are two uh, specific items that uh, I would like to bring forward to, for a council consensus. Uh, the first is, um, where are we at here? With the resignation, actually three, um, excuse me with the uh, resignation of uh, uh, former Mayor Rogers, we have the emergency food and shelter uh, committee that is two times per year. And uh, I believe uh, Council Member Inisco has expressed interest in that. If everyone is, uh, is comfortable with that, we'll make, uh, make that change. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, we have uh, Mason County EMS and Trauma Council. And I believe uh, Council Member Schmidt had expressed interest in that. Um, and if there's consensus, we'll, uh, we'll uh, pencil that in. Yes. Okay. And then uh, lastly, we have, let's see, my eyes are going bad. Excuse me. Um, well, uh, and LTAC uh, automatically follows the mayor. Uh, and there is, uh, so Mayor Dorsey will be uh, participating in the LTAC uh, um, process. 
And then uh, lastly, we had uh, Mason County Criminal Justice Working Team that meets uh, the third Wednesday of every month. And that was former council members Kron's committee assignment. And uh, I've spoken with our uh, newest council member, council member Bode, and uh, uh, he has expressed interest in that assignment. So with the consensus of council, we'll, we'll make that happen. And all the other council committee assignments will stay the same unless there are uh, any other requested changes. Anyone else have any additional requests? All right, then we will go ahead and move on to a motion. Do I have a motion on this item? I move to approve the council committee assignments as published, adding council member Bode to the law enforcement working group, excuse me, the criminal justice working group, um, myself to the um, EMS and trauma council, and council member Onisco to the emergency, me, food, and shelter. emergency food and shelter. When it's not written down. And noting that the mayor will take on the LTAC. And the mayor, mayor will take on the LTAC committee. Yeah. All right. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any uh, further questions, comments for Jeff? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second to accept the council committee assignments as discussed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. With this, we move to our second general public comment period this evening. And Donna, do we have anyone signed up? We do not. We do not. And so with that, City Manager Knight is back to you for administration reports. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, two items. I wanted to update you on the storm that we had, not the one currently going on, <laughs> uh, but the one that we had uh, uh, several weeks ago. Uh, we had on uh, the 19th of December uh, slightly less than three quarters of an inch of rain uh, and uh, a plant flow or a, a water flow through the treatment plant of uh, 1.49 million gallons per day, which uh, is pretty significant. But the, on December 21st, uh, we only had point. Uh, 0 0.04 inches of rain, but a flow of 5.352 million gallons per day. So there is a lot of water flowing through the plant. Uh, we did have a uh, shellfish uh, uh, areas in Oakland Bay that were closed for a minimum of uh, five days due to uh, any time we get more than three inches of rain in a, um, uh, I believe it's a three-day period, the uh, uh, shellfish uh, harvesting is automatically closed for five days anytime you get that much rain. Uh, preventative measures that we took, we had two employees uh, on staff starting at 4 p.m. on December 19th through midnight on December 21st. We had filled sandbags available for citizen pickup that we uh, posted on all our available social media channels to make sure that people were aware that those uh, resources were available. Uh, we monitored the high tide timing and on uh, 12, uh, on the 18th and the 19th, we made sure all the catch basins were cleared uh, and the basin grates were cleared uh, and any problem areas we were able to jump on quickly. Um, we had the main sewer tra uh, treatment plant staffed 24-7 uh, uh, for those four days uh, and we made any uh, process changes as needed with uh, all those increased flows. So we didn't have, uh, there were problems but they were anticipated problems and we did what we could to uh, prevent any uh, um, any problems uh, resulting from that storm. Uh, I'm sure it will be much the same with uh, the current storm we're experiencing. Um, secondly, I uh, would like to introduce uh, Carrie Holloway behind me. She is a new admin administrative assistant that's uh, helping Donna uh, and uh, Donna is very happy that she's here. Uh, so we're getting the minutes caught up again from where we were before. Um, and if that's not mind numbing enough, we have records and everything else to go through. So. Uh, Carrie will be helping us with that, and uh, we very much appreciate her joining us here at Shelton. Uh, the legislative send-off was mentioned this morning. Uh, that was a, a terrific event and a good uh, opportunity for us to interact with our delegation, uh, making sure they know uh, not only Shelton's priorities, but the community as a whole priorities. Uh, the partnerships that we have there are extremely valuable, and uh, it was, it was a, a very good event, I thought. 
Uh, the homeless outreach coordinator that we have uh, uh, are recruiting for, we have 11 applicants for that position. Uh, interviews should be con uh, conducted over the next couple weeks and hopefully we'll have that person uh, on board and working uh, uh, by mid-February at the very latest. Uh, but that's uh, the timeline we're targeting for that. And uh, lastly, as was mentioned, the uh, county was uh, uh, held a meeting this morning to discuss the expansion of the urban growth area, uh, and that was approved. And uh, so our maps now match the county's maps, and everything's good to go. Good. Uh, with that, I don't have anything else. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. All right, seeing no questions, with that, um, we will move into an executive session for 15 minutes to discuss the qualifications of a public employee and discuss possible litigation. Um, that is 15 minutes, so we will return here at 636, so at 651. <clears throat> All right, and we are reconvening this meeting at 6.51 p.m. from executive session. Um, are there any new items for discussion this evening? This is a comment. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, congratulations to council member, now Mayor Dorsey, and another, another tenure from Deputy Mayor Peterson. Look forward to 2020 and all the wonderful things that that brings to us here in Shelton. So, good Amen, times. Amen, brother. Right on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you too. Oh. Welcome back. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. All right. With that then, I'll, next meeting is on January 21st, 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m. And with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>